Alright, let me show you a video of uh, the alignment of the throttle body and the wedge. So basically you can see that it's offset, but it's also perpendicular to these lines on the manifold. So, so when I'm using the VRPs, what I do is I take my runners down to a flat boss because all of this here uh, is going to be covered with the VRP plates and TIG welded in each spot here to hold the plate in place. So it gets rid of all this volume inside. But basically I take from this edge right here, the inside edge to the inside edge of the runner here, and I have 11 inches. And on the outside here, I'm 15 and three quarters to 15 and three quarters. So basically I've, I've dropped the runner down, um, not a whole lot, but probably about less than half an inch um, on cams that are 220 or less duration, on, specifically on heavy trucks. Now, obviously a lighter car, um, I can drop, drop this down even farther. I can come down a whole nother inch. And what that does is that's moving my, my peak torque uh, to a different area. So depending on what converter and gears a guy has in his setup and how much weight he has and compression and cam, such as 224 and greater with 10.0 and higher compressions, any cams like that, you can run it shorter. Um, but without it, we don't want to do that. So, uh, so basically I keep it at a fairly level area here. Uh, this is roughed in right now. This is what it looks like when it gets roughed in uh, with the mill. Uh, it starts with the cuts. And then I'm gonna go back in here and then I start hand blending all these ports all the way back. Uh, on a stage one, I go about four inches. And then um, obviously on the stage two, I run all the way through and then match the 2.3 CSA on both sides. So. So there you go, there's um, kind of how I do my setup here. Um, and yes, I am TIG welding um, the plates in place um, because I back in the past I used to use epoxy and um, I just simply upgraded to a TIG welder later on. I still have ones running epoxy out there, but I prefer to have the TIG welder in place and um, get everything done. Now you don't have to TIG weld the whole thing shut. You don't have to worry about gaps either. You're just taking the majority of that flow, that volume out of there, so that when the air comes through, it's it's um, kind of creating a velocity in here. And the VRPs are kind of radius on the, on the corner, on the edge of them too. And then obviously down here, all of this gets milled out and opened up to where it's an oval. Like that. So there you go. Hope you guys enjoy that. And a little update for uh, guys that were asking about how to set their VRPs and everything in place, and uh, specifically the guys that are actually machining their own stuff now. Um, pretty soon, Chris at Performance Injection is going to be doing me a big favor and getting his Mazak fifth axis. I guess I'm the fifth axis right now because I can move this at any angle. But Chris is going to get the fifth axis going on his uh, CNC machine. And I will be able to send these to him and he will be able to do a stage one, stage two port on them for me. And then I can rough them in later, weld in and do my, my wedge plate for diverter flow. Uh, so he'll be doing those manifolds from this, this point forward once he gets set up and running. And we're real excited to uh, be able to see how well that machine performs and um, give him a call over there. Uh, I get all my heads and everything from there. Obviously with, with being intake manifolds on back order for uh, um, other companies out there like the Air Gap and stuff, um, this is why we run what we run, you know? And uh, hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, take care, man.